Hey guys, welcome back to another video. When I was making the Pelican one and then later the missile one, it leads itself into a follow-on conversation about the air fighting in Halo, just overall in general, and really the lack of air dominance fighters. And what I mean by that is like in the Halo games, we see fighters in space combat every now and then, like in some cutscenes, you fly the saber. Um, that's kind of it. You really don't see much more than that. You don't see really like hardcore, like trying to control the, the air or space domain. Less so space, more, more so in the air in the Halo game. And then the lack of that, I think, really hinders the UNSC. And, and kind of in line with the other videos, there's a lot of like real world application that we have that if the UNSC leverage could really help them in the fight against the Covenant. So what am I getting at? So air dominance and air dominance fighters are how we control the air domain in a war. And so every air force relies on these air dominance fighters to defeat the adversary air force. It's as simple as that. You are trying to have your own aircraft that are capable of defeating the adversaries so that your strike assets, your bomber assets can move closer to the line of troops to be able to support the ground war. Because you can't win a war on the ground via air. Sorry, Air Force Bubba's, that's just how it is. So there's a couple ways historically that countries have tried to come up with air dominance fighters. You have the Soviet design, which was very high speed and lower G, and then almost by accident, you have the American design, which was high G and decent speed, but not nearly as fast as the Soviets. And it's kind of funny how that happened. What it was, was the Soviets made the MiG-25, which is a very high altitude, high speed aircraft made to intercept incoming B-52s because Soviet Union was huge. They needed aircraft to go really fast to be able to find the incoming bomber groups. The US thought the MiG-25 was a high maneuverability fighter. So they started making all these, what we call 9G capable aircraft. And all that means is you can pull 9Gs of acceleration. It's a very tight turn. And when you're fighting another aircraft, being able to turn inside of them means that you can get like the advantageous shot. But the two kind of like clashed, right? It was funny, it wasn't until the US acquired a MiG-25 um, from Egypt that they realized how things had changed. They had rewrite all their books. But that's kind of how the two uh, world powers at the time saw it. They wanted high speed to order to get to the Americans and destroy them uh, before they could get onto Russian territory. So their air dominance was more about interdiction. Whereas US air dominance was going into your airspace and defeating you in a straight up plane on plane fight. In, in addition to the speed and G's, obviously in the last 30 years, we've seen the growth of stealth technology not much really to say about that. The radar absorbent, hiding your IR signature, nice pointy angly planes. We don't really see that in the UNSC per se, but you could. And there's actually really cool applications when it comes to stealth that people don't really think of. I think even the Russians came up with this, like a blanket of radar absorbent material to go on top of the tanks and vehicles. And that way, because they know the US has standoff aircraft that paint the ground with radar to look for like tank columns, right? If we were in a conventional war, in order to direct strike assets and fighters and stuff like that. And so they put material on their tanks to kind of subdue that and makes it harder for them to be seen at great range. So stealth goes beyond just like aircraft. It, you're just trying to like negate uh, radar emissions. And then air dominance fighters typically have a pretty heavy loadout since you're trying to defeat enemy fighters. Uh, you carry missiles and guns. And missiles are kind of cool because they come in different flavors. You have passive, semi-active, and active. And all that really means is passive, you emit nothing. So you can't be seen unless they happen to see the missile launch. The missile is looking for like heat signature, something that the enemy creates all the time that can't really control. Semi-active means that you are painting the enemy with your radar and the missile is looking for the bounce back of that to track. And so that's how it finds the enemy. And active is really nice because you launch the missile and it paints the enemy fighter with its own radar once it's acquired it. So you, you don't have to keep illuminating it with your own radar. Semi-active you do, you have to keep your radar on the enemy. And that's nice because it's like, they will see that they have a radar pointing at them, assuming they have like, you know, a warning receiver and being able to shoot the missile and then get out of there just means that you can continue to stay in a really advantageous position if you are fighting. And the last couple things when it comes to air dominance is ECM and ECCM, so it's electronic countermeasures and counter countermeasures. And all like we have stuff like toad decoys and chaff and whatnot. It really comes down to is you're just trying to defeat the radar signature um, from whatever missile or aircraft is trying to shoot you down. And then ECCM is just like how is the radar system trying to pierce through like all the bullshit you're throwing at it to make sure it's still out cool. So now taking all that and applying that to the UNSC and the Halo games. Right, so it's like four fighters, as far as I saw playing back through the games. You see like the longsword and some cutscenes. You see the saber and Halo Reach, which both are really cool and they're listed on the Halo Wiki as being like air dominance fighters or air combat fighters. 
they don't really look the part. Like the long sword is huge. It's, it's really wide. It may work really well in space, but that huge like blend, that huge blended body design is not going to be very like maneuverable in the atmosphere. It's just unfortunately how it'll be. But then when we look at what Halo uses fighting in, on the surface, it's always like the Falcon, Hornet, Wasp alongside like pelicans and notice about all of those is they're like tilt rotor slow moving aircraft with very short range guns and sometimes missiles and even the pelican for being <clears throat> significantly larger really isn't able to bring a whole lot of like target power to bear and that's kind of what made me come up with this video is like i was looking at the pelican and i'm playing through campaigns and i was like we really don't see the unsc coming in i think like in halo 3 you see long swords like drop some bombs and shoot some missiles but you're never seeing like you know a, a fighter asset like ripping through the sky shooting down horn or banshees and stuff which is funny because it's like all right step back and look at what the adversary has and why like having a proper air dominance fighter would really help the banshee is incredibly small like it is significantly smaller than f-16 and the f-16 is actually a very tiny fighter if you look at the f-16 compared to like a big boy fighter like an f-15 mig-25 an f-22 like the f-16 is tiny the banshee is even tinier than that like that thing is like a small car not very big the seraph is significantly larger the seraph is going to be closer to the size of like a full-up fighter uh, but both of them well particularly the banshee appears to be optical only like you can't track stuff to people you just kind of shoot the seraph when you fight it in the campaign does appear to have guided weaponry in the sense that the plasma shooting at you does seem to track off you so you could go out on a limb and say that it's got like radar guidance of some variation or maybe like an ir search track system so knowing that's what the covenant brings to fight on the surface and of course phantoms which are slow moving like transport you know troop carrier aircraft how to defeat it so i guess you're not really too interested in out turning it i guess you can because both the Banshee and the Seraph do not appear very fast. Well, the Seraph, I guess, could actually be pretty fast, but the Banshee is not. The Banshee is slow, and that could just be campaign balancing. But the big thing I would say is you just need to stand off to defeat them. Now, obviously, the Covenant has really advanced technology. They got like, lasers and plasma and like really nasty stuff like that that just cuts through human technology. Okay, cool. Uh, we can still blow them up with missiles from really far away. And so that would be my going in argument. The next thing that we only see touched on once in the games is any sort of, we call, like I said, ECM, or like jamming. Once in Halo Reach, they jammed Covenant comms. And we know that Covenant have like just shit comms, right? Like Cortana laughs about how quickly she was able to break into their systems and like they don't encrypt anything. In the real world, dude, buzz are on, like just straight jamming everything they have. And, and that's the way it should be. That's it, it was cool to see that once in Halo Reach, and Halo Reach struck me as much more heavily military, sci-fi inspired. Some of the other games get really campy and like loose with it, but Reach really felt grounded, like it felt like you were fighting. And so it was really cool to see them do something smart like that, like, hey, we're gonna jam the Covenant comms and we're gonna ambush them so they don't have time to realize that we've raided their ship. That's something 100% we do today. Jamming guidance would be really cool. So like disabling the Covenant ships for being able to have good guidance to shoot you. Or last but not least, like if they're shooting plasma, which we know is controlled by electromagnetic energy, like jam the plasma, disrupt whatever container it's using to, when I say container, like to contain the plasma energy and cause it to start to disperse so that it's not like a tightly focused laser of power. You know, in the Halo games, we see a lot of tilt rotor and smaller aircraft, which are fun to fly and probably good for multiplayer, but we don't really see anything like, like an actual air dominance fighter. And it's true, kind of like for the Covenant too. I mean, the Seraph is, pro I would say that is a proper fighter uh, for alien technology. The Banshee is not, I mean, that's like, you know, a tiny little plane. The most fighter-like aircraft we really see are typically in space, and that's Ironic because most of the fighting happens on the ground. And so if the UNSC had proper fighters, they could significantly degrade like the Covenant's ability to bring power to bear on them. And I really think that would help kind of like expand, you know, the fight and make humanity a little bit more, you know, able to stand up to them. If you liked videos like this and you want to see more like military sci-fi, feel free to like and subscribe. Thanks guys.